what happened in this chamber last month, putting everything on hold for three weeks as House Republicans failed time and time again to elect a speaker, that was not democracy. All the drama and all the chaos of the Republican conference over the last few weeks, that was not democracy. Shutting down half of the United States Congress, immobilizing our national legislature at a time of global turmoil, that is actually the exact opposite of democracy. I keep hearing from my colleagues across the aisle uh, that they claim that not having a speaker for three weeks was somehow democracy in action. That's a bunch of baloney. Some of them even said that this impasse made our country look good on the world stage. Are you kidding me? What planet do they live on? Their dysfunction makes us look like idiots. The American people elected all of us to come here and to represent their interests and their ideals. That is democracy. They didn't send us here to play student government. They didn't send us here to sit around and yell at each other about who gets to be speaker as if this were Lord of the Flies. They sent us here to work, to govern, to get things done. Republicans have a slim majority in the House. Democrats have a slim majority in the Senate. Joe Biden is President of the United States. To get anything done, anything, Republicans need to come to the table and work with us in a bipartisan way. That is what democracy is. It's compromise, it's consensus. But the spectacle we saw last month, this chamber sitting empty for weeks on end while Republicans fought with, with each other, or even the idea that they should be fighting over which member of their conference would compromise with the Democrats the least, let that sink in. That's not democracy. That's a national embarrassment. And now, even after three weeks of self-inflicted chaos, the House GOP still doesn't seem to get it. Instead of working across the aisle, they are digging in their heels um, and they are uh, cutting and they are continuing to advance their extremely partisan appropriations bills that will never become law. No lessons learned over the last few weeks at all. The GOP's interior and environment funding bill for fiscal year 2024 profits polluters while endangering the health of Americans. It cuts EPA funding to its lowest level since 1991. The bill additionally slashes funding for arts programs and once again shoves MAGA culture wars down the throats of the American people. They can't help themselves. The Republican Transportation, Housing and Urban Development funding bill for fiscal year 2024 would also keep us from meeting our nation's infrastructure and housing needs. It cuts funding for housing and transportation programs by 28%, putting American safety at risk while once again attacking vulnerable communities. Now, I don't know how often this needs to be said before it sinks in. These draconian cuts to essential programs will not become law. If these bills manage to make it off the House floor, the Senate will vote them down. And it will be a bipartisan vote in the Senate, by the way. Even the Senate Republicans can't stomach this garbage. And if they ever made it to the President's desk, he would veto it. But what I'm gathering is that Republicans would rather press forward with these unreasonable bills instead of coming together to form a funding plan that serves all Americans. We're just over two weeks out from a government shutdown and all Republicans are doing here is wasting more time. This is a complete waste of time. It is ridiculous. And I haven't even got to how cynical, how cynical and insulting this new supplemental aid package is. Republicans are leveraging the excruciating pain of an international crisis to help rich people who cheat on their taxes and big corporations who regularly dodge their taxes. I mean, are you kidding me? I mean, the fact of the matter is the richest people in this country pay less in taxes than teachers, than police officers, than firefighters, than nurses, than 
laborers. I mean, this is what this is all about? Wait a who came up with this brilliant idea to help rich tax cheats? Who came up with that idea? Was that hatched at a fundraiser in Mar-a-Lago? Did some big donor come up and twist somebody's arm and say, you gotta do this, you gotta protect us, we wanna continue to cheat on our taxes so we can, we can make more, keep more money? I mean, this is truly despicable. And here's what I love. The bill's so-called offset, the so-called offset cuts $14.3 billion from the IRS, which will further increase the deficit. Basically, they want to cut funding from those who are responsible for holding big corporations accountable, for going after rich tax cheats. That's their offset. And according to CBO, it will add to the deficit. Let me repeat that. This bill adds $12.5 billion to the deficit. Their offset actually needs an offset. Once again, I mean, they cry and they cry and they cry about the deficit, but have no problem uh, conditioning aid to Israel on another tax break to millionaires, billionaires, and corporations. I mean, Representative Chip Roy, who's on the Rules Committee, said, or maybe yelled, and I quote, this aid should be paid for. It should be paid for with real money, not budgetary gimmicks, end quote. That's, but that's what this is. This is a budgetary gimmick, a big, gigantic, in-your-face gimmick. It's a joke. And you come to the floor with a straight face to say that somehow we are paying for this, uh, this package. I mean, really? I mean, I, I, I don't know, how can you say that? with a straight face. I mean, it makes sense because, you know, they don't like the results of, of the election and they try to overturn it. They don't like the math from CBO, by the way, uh, and they pretend it doesn't exist. Republicans say they are friends of Israel. If I was Israel, I would unfriend them. I mean, what they are doing here will delay aid to Israel, not to mention no humanitarian aid in here for the vulnerable people in Israel or Gaza. Congresswoman Washington Schultz came before the Rules Committee last night and asked us, tearfully pleaded with us to make in order her amendment for humanitarian aid that the President of the United States requested. This is humanitarian aid for Israel, for Palestinians, for people in Ukraine. She, she, and she pleaded with Republicans to unlink their conditions on aid. She offered an amendment to put the humanitarian aid that the Republicans left out, again, to, and, and asked that we help some of the most vulnerable people who are caught in the middle of this conflict. People in Israel, people in, in Gaza, people in Ukraine. And by the way, half of the people in Gaza are children for God's sake. They need food, and they need medicine, and they need water. They need it now. They need help now. And I offered Ms. Wasserman Schultz amendment, and it was voted down, voted down by every single Republican. I mean, I gotta tell you, Mr. Speaker, the ease and the indifference with which they rejected even making her amendment in order was, quite frankly, chilling. And by the way, there's no aid for Ukraine uh, in this supplemental package. Nothing. Uh, nothing. This is what the, what, the, what the president asked for. So Vladimir Putin's happy. I mean, I, 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 I'm always amazed at how my friends on the other side of the aisle fall over each other to try to make Vladimir Putin happy. Well, he's happy with the package that you are bringing to the floor today. And no aid for any other national security priorities that the President asked for. So to sum it up, Mr. Speaker, the House is back, but Halloween has been extended. These people are scary, and there's no saying what will happen next. And I hope, I hope and I pray for the sake of the nation that House Republicans come to their senses soon. This is no way to govern.